problem with putting yourself out there is that you might be putting yourself in danger. History is full of unhinged members of the public or righteous vigilantes, those last two aren't always that separate, seeking to make a name for themselves or their cause by striking down an influential figure. Sometimes, distressingly, the way they seek to do that is in front of as many cameras as possible. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 assassination attempts that were shown on television. Viewer discretion is advised, some of this footage may be upsetting. Number 10, Ronald Reagan. The man who pioneered Reaganomics, which either crippled or rejuvenated the country, depending on how you see it, almost met his end at the hands of a gunman called John Hinckley Jr., who, bizarrely, was doing it to try and win the affection of Jodie Foster after seeing her in Taxi Driver. Doing his best Travis Bickle impression, Hinckley shot Reagan and three others as they were leaving the Washington Hilton Hotel, captured on several news cameras and broadcast around the world. Number 9, Hamid Karzai. The 12th president of Afghanistan, Hamid Karzai, fought off many assassination attempts through his 10-year run as the big dog of the country, yet proved eminently unkillable each time. The most dramatic occurred in April 2008 when a military parade attended by Karzai was attacked by members of the Haqqani network who were ideological bezies with the Taliban. They fired on the parade with machine guns and RPGs. Karzai walked away unharmed, but three people were killed in the crossfire. The event was caught on live television, though the feed was terminated shortly following the first shots. Number 8, Mahmoud al-Mabou. The first successful assassination on this list, again, viewer discretion is advised, Mahmoud al-Mabou was one of the founders of the military wing of Hamas, the Palestinian governing body of the Gaza Strip, one of the most turbulent places on the entire planet. He was assassinated in his hotel room in Dubai in 2010, having been injected with a muscle relaxant and smothered with a pillow. The act itself wasn't exactly captured on film, but the CCTV footage of the killers and the moments leading up to his death were widely circulated on news programs around the world. Number 7, Ahmed Dogan. This one looks like a horrifying attempt, miraculously escaped. Dogan is a Bulgarian politician and in 2013, while speaking in front of a large crowd, a man, later identified as Octay Enememedov rushed the stage, pointed a gun at his head, and pulled the trigger. The gun failed to fire, and the man was wrestled to the ground before the security crew thumped the crap out of him, presumably for showing him up as being, you know, not great at their jobs. It later transpired that the gun was filled with blanks, which would have caused non-lethal injuries had it gone off, but it's still a shocking moment captured on global television. Number six, Robert F. Kennedy. Yeah, this isn't going to be the last time we mention a Kennedy on this list. Tasteless joke as it is, Bobby Kennedy emulated his brother in a lot of ways. Both men graduated from Harvard, both men ran for president on a Democratic ticket, both men met their end in public at the hands of a lone gunman. Oh, and both men's deaths are the subject of countless conspiracy theories, because of course they are. Though a Palestinian immigrant, Sihan Sihan, was convicted, he claimed he was framed, and there are theorists alleging that the CIA were involved in Kennedy's death. Unlikely, though, considering the number of eyewitnesses that saw Sihan pull the trigger, shooting the presidential candidate three times as he was making a shortcut through the kitchen of the Ambassador Hotel in California. Cameras began rolling immediately following the gunshots, and one freelance reporter caught the audio of the shooting itself on her recorder. Number five, in Ajira Asanuma. Again, viewer discretion advised, Asanuma was a leader of the Japanese Socialist Party. He was a controversial figure because of his ardent support of the Communist Party of China, which was busy oppressing the living hell out of its populace under the dictatorial rule of Chairman Mao, who was more than a little war-hungry and mad. A Japanese nationalist took exception to Asanuma's views and assassinated him during a nationally televised debate in Tokyo, running him through with a samurai sword in front of the audience, the country, and the world. Number four, Jarala Omar. Jarala Omar al kuhali was a Yemeni advocate of human rights, opposed to the authoritarian administration of his homeland. He fought as a guerrilla in the National Libertarian Front in the civil war between North and South Yemen and at the time of his death was Deputy Secretary General of the Yemen Socialist Party. He was assassinated in 2002 after delivering a speech by an Islamic hardliner who fought on the other side of the civil war. He approached Omar and fired two shots into his chest at close range with the sound and aftermath of the incident captured on Yemen TV. Number three, Yitzhak Rabin. One of the most shocking assassinations in history. At the time of his death, Rabin was the fifth Prime Minister of Israel, serving his second term in office. He had recently won a Nobel Peace Prize for his role in the creation of the Oslo Accords, a set of agreements between Israel and Palestine, with the goal of achieving peace between the two countries, establishing agreed borders, the status of Jerusalem, incredibly important work. This angered Israeli ultranationalist Yigal Amir, who gunned down Rabin after he had been attending a rally in Tel Aviv. His death was met with widespread shock and outrage, and his funeral was attended by many world leaders. Number two, Lee Harvey Oswald. The most important murderer with three names since John Wilkes Booth, Lee Harvey Oswald was a sniper who shot President Kennedy. Although did he? Could he? I'd say please don't clog up the comments section with this debate, but you've already written two posts about it, one claiming it was all a cover-up and another correcting the spelling of someone who's disagreed with you. Hooray for the internet. Regardless of whether or not he did it, Oswald met his end in a similarly public manner, being shot in public by Jack Ruby. In a now infamous piece of new footage, Ruby stepped out from a large crowd, gun aimed at abdomen and fires at 
point blank range. Did he do it for the mob? Did he do it to redeem his native city? Were higher powers at play? It's all wrapped up in the maelstrom of misinformation that was the JFK assassination. And speaking of that, number one, John F. Kennedy. Possibly the most famous assassination of all time, John F. Kennedy was gunned down by allegedly Lee Harvey Oswald in Dallas, Texas on November 22nd, 1963. Not only was it deeply shocking, but it was a global event. Caught on camera from several angles, shots of Jackie Kennedy trying to escape the car mid-gunfire had become infamous and the world was asked, where were you when Kennedy was shot? A survey 50 years after the shooting in 2013 found that 61% of those asked believed that the assassination was part of some sort of conspiracy. And now, because it's useless to try and hold back the time, have it in the comments, people. Who did it? Was it a lone gunman? A rogue secret serviceman? Adam Sandler? J'accuse Adam Sandler. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.